Hi, it's Ginger and welcome or welcome back to the Copycat Quilter. Today I'm going to show you how you can make a chandelier quilt without a pattern. So this quilt was one of the first that I made on point and if you've seen my other videos you might know I have challenges with on point. This one turned out pretty nice. I was impressed. I decided to make this quilt using low volume backgrounds instead of my traditional white on white or solid colors. That's kind of a challenge I've been giving myself. So that the quilt that I made before I put on a dark background and I used jewel tones and it made kind of a blended color. It's not quite as bright as my normal quilts are. But for this one, I decided to go with kind of fall colors, maybe kind of oranges and olive greens. And I decided to make it those colors because it might look a little more masculine. And this will be going to a cancer center where they use them and give them to patients while they're having chemo. And a lot of the charities talk about how they don't receive nearly as many masculine kind of quilts as uh, quilts that might be floral or look a little more feminine. And that's probably because most quilters are women and we're picking out fabrics that we're really attracted to. So stick around and see how this one's done. It's a really easy pattern. Uh, the block is super easy to make. The biggest challenge is putting it on point. But if you take your time and do that, that's no problem either. And maybe some people, not me, <laughs> don't have as many problems with on point. So why don't you take a look and maybe try it out. This is my chandelier quilt. I decided to use the jewel tones against the dark background. I kind of felt like it was a little more sophisticated maybe. And the muted colors were nice for our bedroom. Because there's shadow at the top corner, I'm just going to start in the middle. And there's a block there that's pretty obvious, you can see. I already have a clue that this is set on point because all of these squares are set at a 45 degree angle from what they would be if they were set across in rows. So the first thing I can see is this square in the center. And then there are squares in the same color at the top and bottom against two of the alternating corners. If I look around the quilt, I can see the same shapes are repeated here on this red block. And another blocks around it like here and here. So if I go back to the original block, and I look for the blocks around it, like this block and this block are part of other blocks. These small squares are part of other blocks. It helps me find the edges of this block. And I can kind of test that if I look at the block beside it and see that that shape works there too. So let me grab this block and I'm going to put it on another page so we can see it a little easier. Here I have my square. I'll turn it a 45 degree angle so that it's squared off as if it was sewing into a horizontal set. This will help me figure out how to put it. So I need to figure out what I can do to avoid this. I don't want to try to sew inset corners on my squares. And obviously these are all straight lines. So if I decided to cut it this way and then this way, I would have to sew this into kind of a log cabin type uh, pattern going around. And I would still end up, whenever I sewed this and this, I would have to figure out how to sew this piece without this piece because it sticks over here. So that might be a little complicated. Just think of it this way. I want to make sure that I have some equal pieces. If I cut my strips here and here, you can see I end up with equal strips on each side. And then I have these long strips that can fit the top and the bottom of the square. Let's figure out the measurements that we'll need. You know I like to work with pre-cuts. I'm going to make those side strips two and a half inches because that's what a jelly roll would be. My squares on the corner, then, these squares need to be two and a half inches. 
because they're matching the side of that strip. So I have two and a half inch small squares for the corners. It looks like this center square would be equal to four of those two and a half inch squares. So if each of those is two and a half inches and I take off a half inch here and here where I sew the seams together, I end up with a four and a half inch square. Cut and that'll make a four and a four inch square when it's sewn into the block. If each of my strips is two and a half inches, these on the side need to be sewn to match this four and a half inch square. So they would be two and a half inches by four and a half inches. And that's my side strips. My long strips are going to be that two and a half inch square sewn to a strip that covers this area. This area is four plus two and a half. So I need a six and a half inch strip. When I sew my six and a half inch strip to my two and a half inch strip, I lose a quarter inch here off of each one. So I end up with two and a quarter plus six and a quarter. And when sewn together, that makes eight and a half. So that covers the span. I know that's kind of a lot of math, but really, if you look at the way the center block is and you kind of think of what are my cut sizes, and then you take those half inches off, it'll help you figure out what sizes you need. I need two two and a half inch small squares, one four and a half inch square for the center, and then I need for my side strips two and a half inches by four and a half inches, and my top and bottom strips sewn together is a two and a half inch square sewn to a six and a half inch strip. Now I need to go cut those. I'll take I have my cut pieces here. I have two two and a half inch squares, two two and a half inch by four and a half inch rectangles, two two and a half by six and a half inch rectangles, and my center square. So if I lay these out, my square is going to be in the middle. And I'll sew these two sides. Then my strip, my long strips will be on the top and the bottom. And I'll sew the small squares to those. That'll give me my basic layout. It kind of reminds me of the potato chip blocks that you sew the sides on and then you sew on the top and bottom. It's just these also need to be connected. I'm at my sewing machine and I'm ready to sew my pieces together. I'm going to go ahead and stack these two pieces so that I know which way the strips go. And I'm going to sew the top and the bottom to the center square. Now I'll sew the rectangle to the other side. This is super easy sewing. I'd say this quilt pattern could be okay for a beginner. But really the only tricky part is putting it on point whenever you do the layout. I'm going to press these out to where the seams go towards the center because that is the darker color. So now I'm going to take my two strips, my two longer strips with the short, smaller squares, and go ahead and sew those together too. All of these use a quarter inch seam, which is pretty basic in all quilting, if you want corners to match and things from the cut, from your cut sizes. So I'll press these towards the dark side.
Now, when I go to lay this out, I want to make sure that I don't have two squares on the top like this. If I have that, it's going to be a completely different design. So I'm going to spin that one around and make sure it's on the bottom and catty corner from this one. One nice thing about pressing the way I did, if this seam is going to the inside and this seam is going to the outside, I can easily nest them together. And that just means I can put them together and kind of give a little squeeze there and you can feel that seam fitting together and not overlapping at all. So I wanna make sure I hold that while I sew this part. And when I get down here on this seam, there's nothing that has to match it. So the only thing that you have to really look at matching is that first corner there. Again, that's one thing that makes it an easy quilt for a beginner. When I go to press that, it feels like that seam wants to go that way, so I'll just let it go that way. Then I'll do this side, same thing, making sure those seams nest nicely. Kind of, once you get it there, if you kind of squeeze it, you can feel that there's no gap between the seams and that they're going the opposite directions from each other. That'll help you get some really nice crisp points that match up. Now when I get down here, I want to make sure this bottom seam is turned up the same way it was when I sewed here. So again, it's going towards the center piece. But I don't have a seam on this one to have to match to it. I just want to make sure that seam allowance is going the right way. This seam wants to go this way, so I'll let it. It's kind of like your hair. If your hair is curly, don't try to make it straight. And if it's straight, don't spend your life trying to make it curly. And there's my nice finished block. So I think I made 18 for the, I think I made 18 for my quilt, but I'll have to go look and count. I made a lot of these squares. And if I have extras, I'll put them into the back of the quilt maybe. I'll take this and all the rest of my blocks over to my design wall and lay them out. Hey copycat quilters, this is it. This is the video you've been waiting for. I have a fantastic prize package I want to share with you, my viewers. So I'm not sponsored by Aliso, but I did happen to be lucky enough to win one of their top of the line brand new irons. It's in this pretty turquoise color. So I thought I would share this with you, my viewers. Now I have the iron. I also have the handy dandy travel case that goes with it. This is a wool travel case that you can use to transport your iron safely. So together, these are worth around $250, but you could win it for free just for being a viewer. So the official rules are in the description below, and I have them on my website at copycatquilter.com. So read the rules and enter your comment on what kind of iron you use now and how much you would enjoy a new iron, and maybe your name will get chosen. The contest is going to run until April 25th, 2023, and I'll use a random selector to pick one lucky winner out of the comments. So put your comments below. Thanks for watching and good luck. I decided I wanted each of my columns to be consistent with the colors from top to bottom. So I've put them on point and lined them up. And then I've added my side setting triangles and my corner triangles to finish out those edges. And here's the finished quilt top. So you can see I have those setting triangles around the edges and I have the corners on and I have my colors and stripes from top to bottom. Now I just need to quilt it and put a binding on and it will be all finished and ready to deliver to a charity. So I hope you like that. Let me know what you think about it. I was really pleased with how it turned out and I have to tell you, there are no big outtakes for this video. I managed to get that on point, knock on wood somewhere, without having to even rip 
once. I think the key to it was I tried to only put the blocks together first and lay those into my rows and then add those setting triangles and corner triangles. Before I was trying to make the row and put the triangles on at the same time and I think that's where I just really got screwed up. So maybe try that if you struggle with it. You know YouTube likes to share our videos more. The more that you interact, the more likes that you do or subscribes or comments below, it tells YouTube, hey, this was interesting and it might be interesting to other quilters. So if you enjoyed the video, please like, subscribe, hit that notify button maybe, and add a comment below telling me what you think about the video and if you enjoyed it. So until next time, I hope you enjoy your quilting and I hope you come back to see more videos.